The University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 8, Transfer to RAS. It is important to sample fish every few days in the larval system to check not only fish length and weight, but also for overall fitness, fin quality, and any deformities. This will also assist in determining when to change screen sizes, lower densities within the larval tank, and when to transfer the walleye into a water reuse system. Even if densities and feed rates are similar in each larval tank, fish of different tanks may differ significantly in size. Be sure and sample fish from a few different tanks to get a good sample distribution of your larval system. Sample size and distribution is based on the size of your system and facility protocol. If fish are greater than 20 millimeters, they can be sedated for sampling using tricane methanosulfonate, referred to as tricane S or MS222. MS222 is an aquaculture approved anesthetic or tranquilizer of fish and other cold blooded aquatic organisms. It is important to note a 21 day withdrawal time, therefore, do not use within 21 days of harvesting fish for food. This sedation protocol allows for accurate sampling while limiting stress on fish and workers. Walleye or similar species can be sensitive to MS222, therefore use a weak dosage and treatment water first to establish appropriate levels for sedation. It is always important to test your dosage on a few fish first before performing the entire sample. With correct dosage, fish should lose equilibrium after about a minute in the treatment to be ready for handling. Fish length and weights are measured, making sure the measuring tools are wettened to limit damage to fish scales or slime coat. After fish are sampled, they are placed back into the fresh tempered water. Be sure they return to equilibrium and appear swimming normally after several minutes. If they do not, the dosage may be too strong or the exposure length was too long. Recovered fish can then be replaced to the larval tank they were taken from. If fish are less than 20 millimeters, generally handling stress causes mortality. Therefore, fish are euthanized at smaller sizes before sampling. At these smaller sizes, a microscope is utilized to measure the fish length as well as observations such as deformities, gas bladder inflation, feed acceptance, or mouth gape. Throughout the larval rearing period, if feed rates and fish densities are causing excessive or increasing mortalities, fin erosion, fungus, or other issues in the larval tanks, fish densities may need to be lowered. UWSP NADF generally has several larval tanks empty for stocking extra or surplus fry into throughout the larval stage. Freshwater flow can also be increased to the larval tanks to limit water quality issues. When flow is increased to more than 4 liters per minute in the larval tanks, the inflow pipe is replaced with a 90 degree PVC fitting. This allows for increased water flow without increasing water velocity inside the tanks. Depending on bioplans, fish densities, and fish health, after about 30 to 40 days reared in the larval system, small fingerlings are prepared for transfer into a recirculating aquaculture system, or RAS, for continued rearing. These fish can be anywhere from 40 to 60 millimeters in length. At this time, the clay concentration and peristaltic pump outflow should be decreased over the course of a week in the system, and the water in the larval system should be running clear before the fish are transferred into RAS. Recirculation systems can be complex and must be designed to suit your individual facility. Be sure and hire professional aquaculture personnel experienced in RAS to design and build a system to fit your needs. The RAS system shown in this video at UWSP NADF is currently designed to raise walleye or similar species. The main components of this system include six 613 gallon or 2.32 cubic meter tanks, a hydrotech drum filter, a common sump, a fluidized sand biofilter, a degassing column, UV sterilization, and an oxygen cone. This RAS is a tight reuse system, recirculating nearly 99% of the system water. 
Generally, the only water lost from the system is due to drum filter operation, tank cleanings, and evaporation. For backup, the system utilizes two pumps for moving water from the sump through the biofilter and two pumps to distribute water from the sump back to the tanks. Water temperature in the system is controlled by a submersible heater located in the sump. The rear ring tanks are Cornell style dual drain tanks with attached radio flow settlers or RFS. See the culture manual for a description of RAS tank design. Each tank has access to fresh water inflow if needed from the facility's main water head box. Fresh water inflow to the tanks is generally only utilized for emergency situations or for purging the fish prior to harvest. Oxygen lines and diffusers are run to each tank and may be used if needed throughout the rearing period. The tanks utilized for this recirculation system are specifically set up for rearing walleye or similar species. This includes a dark tank environment utilizing a cover, 24-hour in-tank lighting, and a 24-hour belt feeder. To create in-tank lighting, UWSP NADF utilizes PVC piping that is submerged into the tank. Near the bottom of the pipe, a clear section of PVC is utilized with an end cap. A license plate light is run down the inside of the PVC pipe and the light is shown through the clear PVC piece. The pipe is secured to a 2x4 that can then be set across the tank, allowing for the PVC pipe to be submerged in the water. In these larger 6 foot diameter tanks, two lights are submerged on either side of the feeder. A rotational inflow pipe is used to manage the water rotational velocity inside the tank. The inflow is managed at an R of 2 or greater, meaning the tanks are receiving at least two full exchanges of water in one hour. Before transferring fish to a new system, make sure water temperatures in both systems are within a few degrees Celsius of each other. Also, be sure the new system has been running safely with no issues for at least several days. This includes water quality, flow rates, and velocities are within acceptable ranges for walleye. Biofilters may need to be seeded by using fish feed or ammonia, which can assist the system in handling new fish loads. Starting biofilters prior to fish introduction will be based on individual bioplans, fish starting densities, and system volume. Before stocking fish, it is important to have a reasoned sample of fish length and weight from the larval system or the fish to be moved. The average weights of the fish are used to calculate number of fish per kilogram of weight and therefore used to calculate total fish numbers. Always transfer fish in water if possible, especially fingerlings or young fish. UWSP NADF utilizes 5 gallon buckets for weighing and transferring fish. To obtain total body weights of fish from the larval system, fish are weighed in water. To begin, several buckets are set up with a quarter to a half full of larval system water. One bucket of water is set on the scale and teared. Fish are netted from the larval tank using a soft white net. The net is only filled about a quarter full with fish to limit fish stress and injury. Briefly let most of the water drain from the net of fish and place the fish gently into the bucket of water. Keep the fish loads light in each bucket to lessen stress. The weights of fish added to the bucket is recorded and carried over to the new system. If temperature of the new system differs between the larval system, the fish may need to be tempered for several minutes by slowly adding fresh system water to the bucket of fish. If temperatures are similar, the fish can slowly be poured into the new system water. The fish are watched for several minutes to make sure their behavior appears normal before adding more fish. If they appear gasping at the surface, swimming sporadically, or skipping across the water, do not add more fish until you understand and fix the issue. Again, make sure temperature, oxygen, and other water quality parameters are within safe ranges and similar between systems. The fish continue to be weighed from each larval tank and added to the new system. Keeping the total weights from each larval tank separate determines individual tank success. 
If fish are greater than 50 millimeters, they can also be graded as they are moved into a new system to minimize size variations within the RAS tanks. Fingerlings are stocked at a known density into each RAS tank. This is specific to individual bioplans. Check out the UWSP NADF webpage for density studies and outcomes. After the fish are transferred to the new system, hold off feedings for 24 hours to limit stress. Iodine-free, food-grade sodium chloride can also be added to each tank at around 0.7% as an osmoregulatory aid. This concludes the video on transferring to RAS. Continue to the next video on RAS Standard Operating Procedures.